finished yet? Okay, Reverend Juanita, uh, we're not starting just yet, but if you'll just talk in the mic for a minute so I can get your uh, get your voice. Praise the Lord. Testing, testing, testing. The Lord is. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're so glad and so thankful that the Lord has allowed us to see yet another day among the living. This is the first Sunday in April 2020, the day that we call Palm Sunday. The day when Jesus made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. We come to worship our Savior. We come to worship in spirit and in truth. We come to worship in Almighty God. We are so thankful for all that God has done for us. And even in spite of what's going on all around us, God is yet in control. And we are so thankful that he is our God. We thank you, Mount Olive, this morning for tuning in to our broadcast. We are so thankful that we can yet join together in worship and praise to an almighty God together. We're going to, at this time, be led in our praise and worship with our praise team. Amen. Join in, join in, and lift up your voices wherever you may be this morning. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless the old Lord. Oh, with my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with Praise with the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless the old Lord. Oh, I will bless the old Lord. I will bless the old Lord with the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless the old Lord. I will bless the old Lord. I will bless the old Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless the old Lord. And I will bless the Lord.
his hope. Oh, his name. Why are you blessing him this morning? Well, he has done great things. Yes, he has. He has done great things. Hallelujah. He has done great things. Bless his holy name. Let's say it one more time. And I will bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Right where you are, come on, bless him. Come on, praise him, even in your homes. Come on, praise him wherever you are. Open your mouth and give him praise. No matter the circumstances, he's still worthy to be praised. Come on, bless him. Come on, give him glory. Come on, give him honor. Bless his holy name. His name is holy and he's worthy. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Hallelujah. With all. That is within me. I bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Lord, our Lord, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all that is evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. We praise you. We lift you up, Lord God. We magnify your holy name. Oh, Father, we thank you on this day that we can come into your house, God. And we say thank you, Lord God, for watching over us all night long. And, oh, God, allowing us, God, to get rest, Lord God. And wake up refreshed, Lord God, to see our families, Lord God. And, Lord God, even though some of us are going through some troublesome times, and some of us may even be going through bereavement at this time, Lord God, we can still exalt your name and say that you are good and you're worthy to be praised. Lord God, we thank you this day, God, as we come assembling ourselves together. We come, Lord God, into your presence asking for your divine guidance. Oh God, we ask God that you would lead and direct and order our steps, Lord God. Oh God, make your word, Lord God, come alive in our lives, Lord God. Lord God, let us not just be hearers of your word, but Lord God, we become doers of your word, Lord God. 
as we go through this time, God, where we are set aside, God, in our homes, Lord God, as we come together as your families, Lord God, seeking your will, Lord God. Help us to divinely understand, Lord God, what you require of us individually and collectively. Lord God, we turn our hearts to you, God. We shut out the world, Lord God, and we turn to you, Lord God, and we look to you, God, from whence all of our help comes from. We know it comes from you, Lord God, and so, Lord God, we look to you to protect us, Lord God. We look to you to provide for us, Lord God. We look to you, Lord God, oh God, to give us what we stand in need of. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being our God. So we just give you the praise, honor, and glory on this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us turn in our Bibles to our scripture reading coming from the book of Matthew, chapter 21. And as we read, we read about the triumphal entry into Jerusalem on this Palm Sunday. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 21 verse 1 as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethant on the Mount of Olives Jesus sent two disciples saying to them go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her coat by her untie them bring them to me if anyone says anything to you tell him that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a coat, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the coat, placed their cloaks on them. Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. God's word for God's people. Glory to the name of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. At this time... Uh, let us prepare our hearts and minds to give as our pastor comes before us this morning to lead us in a time of giving. Amen. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I greet you in the matchless name of Jesus our Christ. And I want to thank you for tuning in and joining us uh, on the network. Uh, whether you're on uh, live stream or whether you're on Facebook Live, thank you for being a part of the service this morning here at Mount Olive. Amen. In our time of giving, we want you to know there are several ways that you can give. Uh, you can go to our Facebook page. I'm um, excuse me. You can go to our website page of Mount Olive, and you can click on and give there, or you can use the Giveify app. Uh, if you don't have the Giveify app, you can go to your app store, pick that up, plug it, and, and connect it up. It's easy to do. Uh, and then after you connect it up, you can uh, uh, put it to Mount Olive AME Church in Orlando and give that way. 
or you can do it the old-fashioned way of just drop it in the mail uh, and we'll still get it. want to thank you for giving even in this time of um, uncertainty and a time of chaos because as we give to the Lord who has given unto us, the Lord will sure enough, sure enough bless us and the Lord will keep us in his care. So I want to thank you in your time of giving. If you would get your gifts now that you're ready to give to the Lord, the Lord who told us to give freely, the Lord who told us to give generously, the Lord that told us to give cheerfully. And we come with thanksgiving on our heart as we give to an almighty God. If you would take your gifts and hold them up now before the Lord, mm, and together, God, this is my gift. It is a seed. And I plant it in this ministry. I'm expecting a harvest in this ministry and in my life. I'm expecting it to be exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I ask, all that I think, and all that I imagine. Lord, I thank you that I'm able to give in Jesus' name. Come on, put your hand together and bless the Lord for what you're about to give to the kingdom of God. Thank you, thank you. And I want to thank all of those who have, have continuously give of your tithes and offering unto the Lord. It's not a time to not give. It is a time to give to the Lord who we trust to just see us through even in these difficult times. Amen. If you would have your gifts and you prepare them, if you using give a fight, go ahead and do that. If you're using online giving, go ahead and give it. Uh, if you need to get it ready to drop it in the mail, do so. Amen. We're so thankful to the Lord. God has blessed. And you'll see on the screen the different ways that you can get your gifts uh, to the house of God. Amen. God is a marvelous and a wonderful God. We're just so thankful for the blessing of the Lord. And thank you. Those of you that have that spirit of generosity that give unto God's house for the blessedness and for the work of service in the kingdom of God. And now if we would uh, lift our voices up and praise God from whom uh, for, praise God from whom all things have come. Praise God from whom yes. all blessings flow. Yes. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. just so thankful this morning for all of those who have chosen to join us for worship today amen just take a moment just to give God some praise this morning wherever you are just lift up your hands hallelujah just tell God thank you glory to God hallelujah hallelujah let him hear your worship this morning let him hear your praise this morning let him hear how much you love him how much you are thankful that you are a child of God hallelujah tell him you adore him Tell him that he means everything to you. Tell him that he's your best friend. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Aren't we so good, blessed this morning to have such a wonderful God that we can hold on to during this uncertain time. Amen. At this time, we're preparing our hearts and our minds to get ready for a word from the Lord. For truly, God has sent us a dedicated servant of the Lord who does not mind preaching and teaching us all about what God requires of us. 
We are so blessed to have our pastor who is dedicated to sharing the word of God in such a way that it comes alive in our hearts, in our minds, and in our lives. So this morning, if you hadn't already got your Bibles, get your Bibles out. Get them ready. Amen. If you got pen, uh, a, a pencils, paper to write down some of the things that he shares with us this morning so you can hold on to them. You know, I always like to get my pad and paper. I like to have it ready because there's always some truth that pastor will drop that, you know, I have to go back later on and just reflect on it. And during this time, we need a hold to God's word. It's so important. And uh, so let us get ready. And, and if you would just help join me this morning, if you would just lift up your right hand towards your television set, your iPad, your tablet, your iPhone, whatever you may have this morning, and, and just release a blessing to pastor this morning as he get ready to bring the word. Amen. And if you would just in one voice together with me say, preach, pastor, preach. We need a word. We know you got a word. So preach, pastor, preach. Amen. Put your hands together and thank God for the word that's about to be preached. After the singing of the next selection, the next voice you will hear will be none other than our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Mark E. Crutcher. Amen. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I, I don't borrow from its sunshine or its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry. Oh, the future, hallelujah, for I know what Jesus said, and today I'll walk beside him, oh, he knows. What lies ahead I don't know About tomorrow It may bring Me poverty But the one who feeds the sparrow is the one who stands by me and the path that be my portion may be through the flame or flood but his presence goes before me, yes it does, and I'm covered, I'm covered with his blood. Oh, many things about tomorrow. I, I don't see to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know 
who hold my hand so many things about tomorrow I, I don't seem I can't wrap my mind around it I just don't understand but I know but I know but I know who holds tomorrow hallelujah and I know about tomorrow oh I just don't I, I don't I, I don't understand but I know but I know but I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand. Thank you, Jesus. And I know who holds. He holds my hand. He holds my hand. He holds my hand. Yes, he does. And I know. Hallelujah. He holds my hand. Praise the Lord. Greetings, brothers and sisters in Christ. Do you know who's holding your hand? When you look around and you can't depend on so many things that you're dependent on, do you know who's holding your hand? When your children can't go to school, when you can hardly go visit anybody else, when you can't even go visit the sick in the hospital, when somebody dies and you can't have a funeral to say goodbye, when you can't even go to your church and assemble on Sunday morning and have communion together on Sunday morning. Do you know who's holding your hand? At times like this, we need to make sure we know who's been holding our hands all along. And if he's been holding our hand in good time, the thing I love about God is he's not a God that leaves us in bad times. As a matter of fact, he draws closer. He draws near. And when we can't make it, he picks us up in his arms and carries us even in the midst of the storm. Know that he is holding our hands. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to thank you for your word this morning. And we ask, O oh God, that you would just go ahead and use what you created and speak to what you made. Then, O oh God, help us to be receptive to what you say, obedient to what you will, and thank for God for what you've done in our lives. In Jesus' name, let us say amen. Amen. I want to just thank our brothers and sisters who are tuning in on the broadcast, whether you're on live stream or whether you're on Facebook Live. Thank you for just connecting up with the body of Christ, and thank you for just allowing God to use you to, to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. Thank you for your praises and your thanksgiving and your amens. Uh, even if I can't hear them on my ear, uh, our spirits can hear them. So go ahead and if you want to say hallelujah, go and say hallelujah to the Lord. Amen. Praise be to the Lord. 
uh, I'd like to take your attention to the gospel according to Luke, Luke the physician who became the gospel writer. Amen. I'd like to take you to the 23rd chapter. Uh, praise the Lord. And I'll start reading around verse 26. Now as they led him away, they, they laid hold on a certain man, Simon of Serene, uh, who was coming from the country. And on him they laid the cross that he bare uh, it after Je that he bare after Jesus. And a great multitude of the people followed him, and women who also mourned and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, "Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For indeed the days are coming in which they will say, Blessed are the barren wounds." And ne uh, that never be born, and breath which never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things in the green wood, what will be done in the dry? There were also two other criminals uh, led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the criminals, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Amen. I want to speak to you from this subject, uh, lead me to Calvary. Uh, lead me to Calvary. Calvary is a, a peculiar place. Uh, it is the place where Jesus was crucified. But Calvary moved in the lives of humanity even before Jesus was crucified. It was a place outside the walls of Jerusalem. So it was put on the outside of the city. Calvary is on Mount Moriah. Mount Moriah. Moriah means seen of Yahweh. It is the same mountain where Abraham offered up his son Isaac as a sacrifice. And here is where Abraham offered his son and where God gave his son to be a sacrifice. Uh, it is the same mountain uh, that Jerusalem was built and the temple of Solomon was built also. So it has been a sacred place into the lives of the Jews and now into the life of the church. And so we find that this place called Calvary, on the outside, on the outskirts, this place called Calvary, uh, that was uh, seen even far back. Uh, Abraham said, I see the place even before he got to it. And so here is where Jesus will lift it up. Uh, and here's where Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Calvary is a peculiar place. Uh, and I want to understand some things about Calvary for us to know that in terms of about Calvary. Uh, and, and Calvary was a place of crucifixion. And I want us to understand that in order to be raised with Christ, we have to identify with him in his death. We have to understand that we have to be a body that died with him on Calvary. In other words, we have to be led to Calvary just as he was led. And so we have to be led. See, a lot of folk want the power of resurrection, but they don't want to die to get it. You can't have resurrection without death. And, and Calvary is a place that reminds us that we have to crucify our old nature. And that's why we're led to Calvary, not to die for the world, but to crucify our old nature that God can resurrect a new nature, the nature of Christ within us. And sometimes we want to go straight to resurrection, but we have not died unto the Lord. We haven't given up the things of the world. We're still caught up into the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. We're still caught up into the love of the world. And don't you see the world is perishing all around us? God is reminding us that if we hold on to the world, we'll go down with it. So we better grab on to something that can, can elevate out of this world because if we think it's bad now in judgment, you don't want to be here when the wrath comes. My, my, my God. 
So, so we have to understand that Calvary is a peculiar place. Uh, and, 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 and Calvary reminds us of some things that we should not forget. Uh, the Bible tells us that, 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 that we must remember God in the things of God. That's why we testify. And so Calvary, uh, uh, there's an amazing song about Calvary that says, uh, uh, lead me to Calvary. And, and one of the things it says, it has three particular points that it talks about that we are not to forget. The first one that said, lead me to Calvary, least I forget Gethsemane. Gethsemane is the place where Jesus went through so much. It is a place of betrayal, a place of denial, and a place of desertion. Uh, and a place, and, and, and we have to remember what Jesus went through. He was betrayed by Judas, one of his own. One of his 12 disciples betrayed him. You remember the one that, that betrayed him with a kiss? With the similar brotherhood and love and, and honesty, he betrayed the Lord. And how many times have we betrayed the Lord with our kiss of friendship, pretending to be one thing but living another way? Being an officer in the church of God, but living like a devil when you get out of the church. My God. Uh, pretending to be a servant of God, but using the house of the Lord to do your hookups and to do your, uh, uh, set up your mess that you want to do in when the lights get go off. Uh, uh, a place of betrayal. Whenever we act like this, we betray the Lord. Uh, when we pretend to be his servant, but serving ourselves and serving the enemy. We are in betrayal. My, my God. We become like Judith. Uh, and so it is that place of betrayal in the Lord. It was also a place of denial where his own disciple, uh, uh, his captain of the God, uh, betrayed and denied him. And three times emphatically say, not only I don't know him, I'm not with him, and I'm sure not his disciple. And went to cussing the folk to, to show it. He went back to cussing. And how many times have we denied the Lord? Uh, and, and, and we get around, we, we, when we're in church, we hold it, hold it, hold it. But when we get out of, in the world with the other folk, we switch out. Uh, we want to show folk how, how much we can cuss. We want to show how much we can fight. How drunk we can get, we can out drink that one, and, and how much we can caress and do stuff that is not pleasing in the sight of the Lord. Uh, we deny the Lord. Uh, many times Christians don't want to be identified with being with Christ. Uh, they tell you on Tuesday morning, don't preach to me now. I'll wait till Sunday to get that. But how many folks know that we need a word from the Lord on every day? Praise be to the Lord. So, so many times we walk in denial of the Lord. And then they even deserted him. All of the disciples left. It was so bad, Jesus had to ask them one time, will you leave me also? Everybody started leaving him. They started bailing out on him. And this Palm Sunday, this was the Sunday that he entered in and with Hosanna on the highest. They cried out, Hosanna, save us, God. Hosanna, uh, who, who comes in the name of the Lord. But about a few days later, the same crowd switched their song. And how many folk know that folk will switch out on you? And the same folk who, grew, who said, uh, Hosanna in the highest, now was saying, crucify him. Mm. And many times we desert the Lord uh, because the, the truth of the matter of fact, we can't come into the house of the Lord now. And that's why we on live stream because you can't come in and worship. But too many times folk have decided, I'm not going to church today. I, I, I'm too tired today. I'm a rest up today. I'm going to the beach today. I'm going golfing today. I'm going to the club or wherever you go. Uh, yeah, but not in the house of the Lord. We have deserted the Lord many times, abandoned him, left him uh, to follow after the world, to run after something the world has for us. My, my God. Uh, and so lead me to Calvary, at least I forget Gethsemane, that the Lord had to go through betrayal, that the Lord was denied, that the Lord was deserted and abandoned by his own. My God. And, and listen, the Lord says in the word, he said, the Lord is known by the judgment he executes. The wicked is snared in the works of their own hand. The wicked shall be turned into hell. My God. And all nations that forget God. Mm. And, and how about this nation of ours? We'll forget who God is. 
We say on our monies in God we trust, but we trust everybody but God. We trust the money. You can keep the God. We want the money. And, and, and we've gotten so caught up into the riches out. Right now, the leader of this nation is telling folk, well, in a short time, I'm going to pull the plug, and we're going we're gonna to have to make some tough decisions. What he's saying is, I'll let you die before I let you mess up the economy. We're more concerned about the economy than we're concerned about our souls. We're more concerned about the economy than we're concerned about people. My God, where have we fallen to? A nation that, that, that said, bring me your, your humble masses. Uh, uh, and we've got that in New York up on, on a statue that we call the Statue of Liberty. But now we want to close the door on folk that, got, that with their skin may be too dark or come from a place that we don't like. Uh, we don't want the masses anymore. We want to shut them out and build walls. Uh, God said, I'm tired of your walls. Uh, I'm tired of your separation. I'm tired of your supremacy. I'm tired of your unrighteous ways. Mm. How far have we come from as a nation? America, who has politicized racism, mm, institutionalized homosexuality, nationalized classism, and socialized homongering. We have become a nation that have turned our backs on God uh, rather than face God. Uh, too many of our churches have been empty too long. Too many of us have, 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 have spread hatred around the world. Too much of us have lived into lies. Uh, we've got to turn our hearts back to God. We got to go back to believing in God we trust. Uh, we got to go back to saying, God bless America. We got to go back to saying, thank you, God, for blessing us. Uh, we got to stop misusing other nations and become the, the light that God wants us to be, to lift folk up uh, rather than steal their resources and leave them poorer than they were, rather than go and use them to be our slaves uh, and to leave them and abandon them in a third world country. We've got to learn to share what we have. Um, and, 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 and so we've got to do uh, what God has told us to do. We got to do like the movie said with the folk in Wakanda. We can no longer leave our brothers and our sisters in a bad place. Uh, we can no longer hide behind shields of, of, of politics and shields of money and, and let the rest of the world just go to hell when we got more resources than we need. Uh, we've got to open our hearts and we've got to open our spirits uh, and we got to open our purses uh, and we got to look out for somebody else. Uh, God has speaking in an indictment upon our nation. Right now, there's more than a million cases uh, uh, of coronavirus in the world. And do you know better than 25% of them is in the United States? We've got a quarter of the cases right here. We, and, and we talked about China and, and Italy and Spain and how bad it was. But we've got far more cases than all of them together. We've got to turn this thing around. Uh, we've got to reach God. Uh, we've got to, we cannot forget what he went through in Gethsemane. My God. And so not only that, uh, the song then goes on to say, uh, least I forget his agony. Oh, Jesus. And Cabra is that place of agony for the Lord. Amen. A place of agony for our God. Uh, as a matter of fact, Cabra was a place, and uh, it was called Gargatha, which means a skull. It was in the shape of a skull. It was a place of death. Uh, it's a place uh, of death, of separation by sin. It was here at Calvary on the cross that Jesus felt the stain of sin separate him from the Father. It was at this place that he felt the sins of your sins and my sins and our sins all together. It was at this place uh, that he became separated that he might be with us. Uh, it was at this place that he that knew no sin became sin that we could be the righteousness of God. Uh, this is the place of his agony. This is the place of his torment. This is the place of his hurt and pain. Uh, this is the place where he was forsaken by his father because of our sin. Not because he did wrong, but because uh, we did wrong. This is the place where he cried out, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? 
Never before had he cried out so much. In the Garden of Gethsemane, it said he, 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 his soul was in torment. It said in the Garden of Gethsemane that, that he was so much into grief that, 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 that his sweat was like drops of blood. It was in the place where disciples would not pray with him. They went to sleep on him rather than pray. And I want to sort of lift up that somebody still sleep today. The virus is all around them and we still sleep. Uh, folk are dying all around us and we still sleep because uh, we're caught up in our selfishness. Uh, we're caught up in our pride. Uh, we're caught up in our greed. Uh, folks still can't go to the store and get just enough toilet tissue for them. They got to hoard it up uh, and don't care if nobody else have any. And Lord, they got it stacked up in the house uh, and folk got the dash to try to sell it to folk. Do you know somebody tried to sell toilet tissue on the internet $38 for four rolls God have mercy Whew. lead me to Calvary least I forget your love for me Calvary is a place of display it is a place where he displayed his love for us. It's a place where he showed the world how much he loved us. You remember he said in the gospel, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Many times folks so they love us, uh, but when it's time to show it, we can't find them. But Jesus is the kind of God says, I'll show you my love. I'm not just going to tell you my love, I'm going to show you my love. It is a place where he displayed his love. Calvary was on a hill so that people could see from afar. Calvary was outside the city so folk could see what was going on even before they got there. They would put the crosses up on the hill so as people would come into the town, they could see the crosses from afar and fear would come upon them. It was a place of shame, but the Lord blessed him. It was a place where he displayed the love for a sin-sick world. And that's why he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't even know what they're doing. They had done whipped him all, all night, but he said, forgive them. They had whipped him with the cat of nine tails, but he said, forgive them. They had torn his flesh uh, to, into a mat, but he said, forgive them. They had put a, a, a cross on him and made him carry his cross, but he said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they had nailed him to the cross. But he still said, forgive them. They had talked about him. They had scorned him. They had picked at him. They had mocked him. They had lied on him. That took him from one trial to the other one. But still he said, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. That's the kind of Savior that we serve. That's the kind of Savior that we worship. A Savior that would forgive us even when we don't deserve forgiving. A Lord that will love us uh, even when we are unlovable. A God that will show his love for us when we don't even show our respect for him. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. So it is a place of display. And also where God displayed his sacrifice for humanity. It is the place where he said, Father, in thy hands I commit my spirit. It's the place that he died for us. It's the place that he gave up his life for us. The place where he gave up his humanity that we may find our place in God. It is the place that he showed how much he cared about us. But not only that, but it's also the place where he displayed, and here's what I love the best about it. It's a place where he displayed, displayed his power over death. It's a, and over sin and over trouble and over temptation. It's the place where he said, it is finished. In other words, I've taken care of it all. Somebody said that the battle is already fought and the victory is already won. And so because the Lord has already made a way, it is the place where he, he lived up to when they said of him, Behold the Lamb of God who take away the sins of the world. It's the place where he answered the question of Isaac who had asked hundreds of years ago, Our Father, uh, where is the Lamb? And Abraham had told him, said, 
God will provide himself a lamb. Uh, and, and my God provided a lamb, a lamb in the name of Jesus, uh, a lamb that came in Bethlehem, a lamb that came through Mary as a little bitty baby wrapped in swaddling cloth. Uh, but my God lead me to Calvary. Uh, every so often we have to remind ourselves uh, that's why we do communion. It reminds us of Calvary, or the place where he was denied, the place where he was betrayed, the place where he was deserted. Oh my God, take me to Calvary so I will not betray him. Oh my God, lead me to Calvary so I won't deny him. Uh, when I'm around my friends, uh, when the party go to jumping, uh, uh, my God, when the choir not singing, uh, uh, my God, when they're not singing, uh, uh, when they're not praying, uh, uh, when I can't go in the house uh, of my God, uh, uh, lead me uh, uh, to Calvary uh, so that I remind uh, uh, myself uh, that my God, uh, I died uh, for me uh, and for the world. Uh, uh, my God, uh, uh, lead me uh, uh, to Calvary uh, so I won't desert him. Uh, uh, my God, uh, I won't get caught up uh, in my well-doing uh, and not take the time uh, uh, to get on my knees uh, and tell God, uh, I thank you, Lord, uh, uh, for your blessing. Uh, I thank you, God, uh, uh, for your power. I thank you, God, uh, for your joy. I'm uh, my God, uh, but most of all, uh, I thank you, God, uh, uh, for going to Calvary. Uh, I thank you, God, uh, uh, for dying uh, for a wretch uh, uh, like me. Uh, uh, yeah, God, uh, I didn't deserve it, uh, but my God, uh, uh, my God, uh, uh, my God, uh, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad somebody this morning uh, ought to tell God, uh, tell him thank you, uh, ought to raise your hand uh, and tell God, uh, uh, thank you God, uh, show the Lord, uh, I might not uh, can go in your house, uh, but my house uh, is a place of worship. Uh, I'm going to praise you. Uh, I'm going to glorify you. Uh, I'm going to magnify uh, your holy name. Uh, say yeah. Uh, yeah, God. Calvary. The place of his betrayal is denial and his desertion, the place of his agony, <laughs> but also the place where he displayed his love. There's a story I've heard. As it goes, it says, somebody asked, said, how much you love us, Jesus? <laughs> and he dropped his head and the locks of his shoulder and gave up the ghost and said this much no greater love than a person would give their life for us my brothers and sisters at Calvary Christ died for us and every so often we have to remind ourselves that he did it for you and I there may be somebody this morning that need to accept Christ as your savior there may be somebody that need a church home Somebody might need to come back to the Lord. If you need a Savior this morning, if you would repeat after me, Lord, I am a sinner in need of your grace. I've sinned against you, but now I come to give my life to you. God, accept me as your child. I believe you died on Calvary for me and that your blood washed my sin away. I, I submit myself as your child huh, and you as my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just prayed that prayer in sincerity, then Christ is your Savior. You can come home. There may be somebody that need a church home. 
If you need a church home and you want to join and you can't wait till we get back into the house, you can call me today, 850-426-3377. 850-426-3377. And we'll take you into the church as a child of God. My, my God. And if you need to just return back to God, repent of your sins. Tell God to forgive you. Get off your knees, start living for him, and worship his name. My, my God. God bless you today. Thank you for tuning in. And we pray that God will cover you. And know that even though the coronavirus is all around you, God is closer than any virus. And God is able to see us through. God bless you now. And God keeps you in his care. And let us lift the voice up to God. Uh, I just want to just thank you and remind you that we will continue to have service this way. On Wednesday night, uh, you can uh, join us on the broadcast uh, for Bible study, 7 o'clock. We'll be on Facebook Live, live and we at the same time, we'll be on our prayer conference call. So if you want to join us again, I want to thank all those folk who connected up with us. Hope that God spoke a, lie, a word in your life. And the Spirit of God will bless you and cover you. Amen. And now together let us praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all I forget Gethsemane. Lead me to Calvary, least I forget thine agony. Lead me to Calvary, least I forget thine love for me. Lead me to Calvary. Uh, and now to him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask, thing, and imagine according to the power of God that works within all of us. To him be glory, power, and majesty, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. In the name of Jesus, let us say, Amen.